Hi, Andrea. Thanks so much for joining the show today. Really glad to be here. Thank awesome. you. And to get started, can you tell the audience a little bit about your background and history in UX research? Sure. So, um, well, first of all, everyone, I'm Andrea Lewis. I'm currently uh, the Global Director of User Research for Adidas, uh, which has been fantastic. I've been there for about eight months now. And prior to that, I led research across the UK government for various projects. But really, uh, through the pandemic, I was working for the UK government welfare system. So helping to digitize that system, but also to manage the system that had already been digitized. So it's where I sort of poured my heart into for the past three years. And before that, various places across uh, government, e-commerce, um, you know, bouncing from uh, more public projects. So things that are more centered on helping the public in general. Been very fortunate to work with so many agencies but like HSBC and eBay. So I've really seen uh, very different things. Let's talk about like research in, in e-commerce and in fashion. I, I think like fashion seems to change so, so frequently. How, how do you keep up with the users and the consumers? Fashion has so many layers, right, to how we consider it. Uh, it's the self-presentation, um, but it's also just what we need to be a part of the world and exist really. It's just just clothing. Um, and I think it's so remarkable to, you know, be in that world where you can see that very different, like when you're adorning yourself to really present yourself in a way that says, this is who I am. This is a statement, um, versus, you know, just a pair of socks <laughs> just because they're practical because <laughs> I need them because they're warm. Um, it's just so many different reasons why something becomes necessary in your life, that utility of it versus, you know, self-expression or something mm -hmm. like that. So I think that's what makes it really interesting in um, the types of ways that people incorporate fashion into their life and the different needs they have around it and seeing those different need use cases. Uh, I have a question about competitors. I, I think competitive research is important, but I also think there's a balance that needs to be struck between staring at the competition and realizing that you're something completely different entirely. How, how should researchers think about that balance yeah i think designers often force us to think about that balance a lot you know either it's one of the requests they have it's often something yeah. that i have with designers when we're really collaborating they wonder what good looks like or what the competition looks like and then yeah. sometimes we also shy away from that it's like let's not follow um our competitors let's be unique and let's begin from a core set of user needs and build from there which is quite also quite fantastic um but i do think that there is something especially in the digital world in understanding how the majority of people might think what the majority of people might come across or what they might be used to and i think at the most abstract we can call that mental models or ways of thinking but there are certain patterns that we've grown accustomed to. And the more we rely on those patterns, those patterns, sometimes they're visual patterns that kind of become shortcuts that all of us tend to have. It's an interesting world when you become used to patterns and users look for those patterns. And I think that's where you might find benefit in not just looking at the competitors, but looking at the market. Um, Andrea, what type of advice would you have for maybe either designers or researchers trying to break in or enter the UX research world? Try. <laughs> it's, right. you know, don't stop trying, really, is yeah. uh, the, the biggest. I think there can be some, <clears throat> uh, yeah, there. I have definitely read, uh, certainly in social media, uh, for some, how difficult it can be. and. There are not always entry-level roles, indeed. Yeah. Um, a lot of our work is about delivery and the ability to solve a problem immediately. If you're in a learning space in any of those settings where you're being asked to deliver or solve a problem immediately, you can see why it's not always the space for someone to learn, right. but is the space for someone to shadow learn Right, so it's a great place to apprentice and assist someone else who's capable. And it's so looking for those types of opportunities. So that's the way in. Um, and then starting to build up your own portfolio case studies, but real practical experience, and that's the way in. 
Well, I, I guess another question I have is where, where do you think UX research is headed and where should it be headed? Where is it headed now? I think um, a lot of companies are trying to figure out how they scale research alongside design. Um, is it a support function? Is it a leadership function? How is it structured? How many, the designer to researcher ratio? And what does that look like? Um, and that creates a lot of this backlog approach to research requests. And so I think how we think about research within an organization, maybe user research and user research belongs in different places in the organization. They come together as a community, but they're in different functions in different areas. I think user research and UX research is quite dynamic. It's a great problem solver um, and it's a great help in problem solving. Um, where it should be headed, I think we should be closer to the cycle of product development. And that cycle of product development, we're very much close to the delivery aspects, but the more conceptual, super early ideation, maybe even so close as funding, pre-funding, I think user research and UX research should really be part of that whole true cycle of innovation and product development and product creation. Yeah, I agree. Dive into that a little bit. That, that's interesting. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I keep saying this. I think VCs should befriend us. I think we should yeah. be rush, running VC firms, um, user research especially, and UX research to um, look at and validate ideas and concepts very early on. So true. Very so yeah, let's talk about you have your own kind of project that you're, you work on outside of work. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's called Just Researchers and it's okay. justresearchers.com. That's also the brand we use on Twitter. And it's really, um, it's all about encouraging people who are new to user research or who are people who do user research um, and definitely user researchers themselves. It's just a community that welcomes people who are in this practice. So they're doing design research, UX research, user research, they're somewhere in this space. And we focus on peer review, peer standard setting and ethics. And the basic ethics we focus on is just understanding how to interact with a participant, how to get their consent, mm -hmm. the more, most comfortable ways to do that. And then we point them to all the resources around consent and um, having templates and consent forms and things like that. And any guidance on data storage and data protection and what they need to explain to people and things like that. So lots of tips from the reops community and just pointing them to just uh, resources, especially if you're a solar researcher in an organization and this doesn't exist for you. Uh, final question here. Sometimes you just see research um, as an insight and then it doesn't necessarily get baked into the product or the launch. It's just like, oh, that's cool. Let me let these biases creep back in. When do you stop saying, hey, like following your research through till the end of a new release or launch? Or do you just hand it over to pro product and design um, and see what happens? <clears throat> it's really, that's a fantastic question because it is, it is a part of the, the job, I think of user research and UX research that you don't often realize is a part of the job. And it's something that I encourage researchers to, if they think that their job is simply, here's my report, ta-da, yeah. yeah. isn't it brilliant? Go follow my word, <laughs> uh, go off in the kingdom and build. That's not what happens. I'm a huge fan and I definitely encourage embedded user researchers within multidisciplinary teams. Yeah. It, it's fantastic when it's possible. When it's not possible, I think it's the next best thing when you have continuous delivery. It's almost a requirement. So if you have a, a big site, big service, big thing that's up and running, you're going to need some embedded researchers because you need that person there to fold in the insights and who remembers the insights, works with the team, ideates with the team, we try, fail, try, fail, succeed. Great. Off we go. Yeah. And it's that beauty uh, of, of working together and creating together that can happen. Researchers are an active part of product, active part of design, active part of content, active part of development. Yeah. All those parts. Andrea, thanks so much for coming on the show today. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for having me.